I'm Gemma Smith and these are two of my adaptable sculptures. Uh, this one is uh, dark peach and red oxide and this one is mint and golden green. I started making the adaptables around um, the time that I started my current painting project um, with colourful geometric painting and, um, and I guess it was, um, they really evolved out of that process in a way. So um, they kind of helped me solve some of the problems I was dealing with um, in terms of making the paintings and, um, and it, it was almost the logical next pro progression, um, the next step in the progression. Of, of the work that I was making at the time. So the paintings were becoming more and more three-dimensional um, and at the same time they were um, be becoming more and more demanding and more and more active um, and it was almost a logical next step in terms of progression to somehow um, translate the painting into a three-dimensional um, object or sculpture. Well, I had the idea um, for the work a long time before the work was actually um, finished in the way that, that you see it today. So um, the first kind of conception of the work was actually um, going to be a work that was directly, uh, a painting transposed directly into a sculpture. And, and so I even started with um, a substrate like I would with a painting and then kind of cut it up into a sculptural form and then hinged it together um, and and then worked through over a course of years worked through different materials um, and different ways of making the folds um, so the final work is made from aircraft plywood but I have tried steel and core flute and illustration board and so many different kinds of um, fabric or materials for that um, but it, it was very kind of difficult to find the right thing because I was after a material that could be um, cut in the studio with a Stanley knife. Um, I find it really important for the work in a way that it wasn't something that was produced by um, or, or laser cut in a factory because then I would have to submit all the designs whereas because I was making this thing in my studio, each time I made one I could kind of play off the last one and, and rearrange it a bit more or try really radically new shapes for it and so I was able to, um, to just manage that in the, you know, in the studio. Um, and then on the inside of the, of the um, work, it's like a sandwich, so there's two pieces of aircraft plywood and then inside there's um, a piece of, uh, I think it's polyester in the end. I tried, you know, timed canvas and satin and sailing boat material and everything but it had to you know have very specific requirements as well it had to be you know glued together and um, it had to sit very it had to be very strong so that the work could you know the hinges would be um, in working order for a long time so it's I quite like the fact that it's it's like an inside out painting in a way because you know painting usually has the the material on the outside, this has the, the wood on the outside. It's like a back, backwards painting. With these works, I've, I really started off um, quite simply trying different, um, different types of shape. Well, I guess um, I was hoping to produce different types of sculptural forms and because it's very, very hard to tell what will happen once the work comes to life. It's, it's an incentive to make them in a way because the flat, the flat shapes don't necessarily um, do exactly as you'd imagine or even it, it's extremely unpredictable. So um, I quite enjoy sort of trialling new um, shapes and then seeing how they, t how they go when they you know, turn into three-dimensional forms and it's generally hard to guess. Whilst the initial conception for this work was um, to transpose a painting with all its colours and almost allow um, the way that it was displayed to dictate that particular moment so it would be like a changing painting. Um, the one I've got here is, is sort of a later one where I started to explore colour combinations from the paintings. So um, <clears throat> I, I might have you know, been working with a particular blue and, you know, um, and red for a very long time or, or make, actually rather I'd probably be working with two colours and notice that they kind of come up side by side a lot um, during the process of, of making um, small paintings particularly and then I would like to explore that in the sculptural works. 
because you know colour is such an interesting thing. It's you know when there's shadows and all sorts of different lights working with it, it um, changes so much. And so one of those sculptures can seem you know much more um, I guess colourful. But I do find that the you know there's a real incentive to make these works, um, and because of the because of the um, sort of exploration and experimental nature of them, like I don't know what's going to happen when I make them. I don't know how they'll they'll be. Um, but yeah, I mean, I generally don't like to make too. I don't even try and make any similar sculptures. Like I would always, in a way, each sculpture is trying out new shapes and seeing what happens in, in space with them. I yeah, don't need yeah. to do the same thing twice. The point at which I leave the sculpture um, is is very open ended, and it can then have infinite possibilities in in the future in its future life. Um, whereas the way that I might leave a painting feels very closed off and fixed in its um, in its finished product or finished point. Mm. So as you can see, they can <laughs> sit in <laughs> numerous different positions, but um, I think I'll leave them like this. <laughs>